أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد يقول الله تعالى قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا These are the last two verses of Surah Al-Kahf and in these two the first one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he shows us his supremacy and his greatness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning to everyone, لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ If the ocean, if the ocean, مِدَادًا It is ink, it is ink, لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي To the words of my Lord, to the words of my Lord, لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرُ then the ocean would have run out qabla an tanfada kalimatu rabbi before the words of my lord they end walaw jina bi mithlihi madada even if we were to bring another ocean similar to it this shows us the vastness and the perfection of allah's knowledge and allah's words you can imagine the planet we live in or we live on. They say almost 75% of it is water. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if all of that was turned to ink, ink, and it was used to write Allah's words, Allah's wisdom, Allah's knowledge, then all of that will run out. And if you bring another planet like that, it will still run out without Allah's wisdom uh, ending. In fact, in Surah Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَلَوْ أَنَّمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامٌ وَالْبَحْرُ يَمُدُّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ سَبْعَةُ أَبْحُرٍ ما نفدت كلمات الله إن الله عزيز حكيم. الله says and if the whole earth, what is in it of the trees? Now again is estimating how many trees exist in the world. If all of the trees of the world were to be turned into أقلام pens, pens for writing. And the ocean, it was to be supplied and backed up by seven other oceans. All of that would run out, all of those trees, all of that ocean to, was turned into ink, would run out before the words of Allah end and the wisdom of Allah ends. Inna Allah, surely Allah, azizun, he is the most strong, hakimun, he is the most wise. This ayah, this verse, and these kind of verses, they're supposed to tell us and to show us the greatness of Allah. The greatness of Allah. And that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we cannot estimate Allah the rightful way. And we cannot thank Allah in the way he deserves to be thanked. We can't. We can't worship Allah the way he deserves to be worshipped. All what we're doing is to try. All what we're doing is to try. So in the next time you say Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest, this is one of the meanings. This is the knowledge and the wisdom of Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
قُلْ إِنَّمَا سَيْ Meaning who? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِنَّمَا Surely I أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ I am a human like you. I am a human مِثْلُكُمْ like you. What does human mean? Flesh and blood. You understand? The difference is يُوحَى إِلَيَّ I get the wahi, revelation from Allah. And what is the revelation which I get, which is the most important thing? Annama that surely, ilahukum, your Lord, ilahun wahid, he is one Lord, one God. That is the message. That is the message. And that is the message of all the prophets. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ Once you have known that your Lord is one. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ So whoever has hope in the meeting of his Lord. فَلْيَعْمَلْ Let him walk and do عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Righteous actions. وَلَا يُشْرِكْ And let him not set a partner بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ In when he is worshipping his Lord. أَحَدًا With anything else. This verse is very powerful. It says, Say to them, I am a human being like you. The difference is, I get revelation from my Lord. And what is the revelation? The main message of this revelation? That your Lord is one Lord. Once you have known that, how long do you think you'll live? How long do you think you'll live? I'm asking you sincerely. Another 10, 15, 20 years? Maybe. How long do you think you'll live, Ismail? You don't know. You've never thought about it. Okay. How, how long do you think you'll live? Ah? You don't know. But I think all of us will agree one thing. There's a day we'll live. There's an end. Right? And what comes after? فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ So whoever has hope for that day, that day is going to come, but there's two kinds of people. There's people who have hope. And there's people once they die, they know, okay, it's done. There's no hope. So whoever has hope in the meeting of his Lord, what does this mean, hope? يَرْجُوا الرَّجَاء We have hope that Allah will give you good things. You have hope that Allah will forgive you. You have hope that Allah will admit you into paradise. If you have hope, you today, you're a Muslim, you know, ilahukum ilahun wahid. And you say, I have hope, inshallah. That's why I'm trying to pray. I'm trying to be a good Muslim. Allah says to us, though, to finish off this surah, so you remind yourself every Friday at the end of Suratul Kahf, Islam is not about wishful thinking. I have hope, that's it, no. It's not about wishful thinking. I'm a Muslim. No. فَلْيَعْمَلْ Let him walk. Let him do good actions. عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Let him do righteous actions. We just read two verses before what? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمُنُوا عَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ كَانَتْ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ نُزُلًا That جَنَّاتُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ is for who? Those who believe and do righteous actions. So if you have hope of going to جَنَّاتُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ You do what? فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Let him do righteous actions. And we said, the righteous, ac righteous actions has two conditions. One of them is what? Is mentioned here. وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا And when, so when you're worshipping your Lord like that, do not make a partner with Allah. So when you pray your prayer, your Salat al-Isha, make sure it's only for Allah. When you read Quran and you make your voice very nice, make sure it's only for Allah. When you give sadaqah, make sure it's only for Allah. When you help out people, make sure it's only for Allah. If you have hope, if you want to go there and see good things, then it has to be like that. Otherwise, قُلْ هَلُّ نَبِّيُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ amala. You understand? That is the condition. So if you have hope, and this is the right hope Islamically, this is the raja, which is the Islamic raja, the right hope, 
is having hope and acting on it. You understand? Acting on it. Not saying I'm a Muslim, I'm going to Jannah. Allah will forgive me. No. It never works like that. It never works like that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says to the most close people of, of his Ya Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib Salin Salni min mali ma shi'at fa inni la ughni anka min Allah shay'a Ask me what you want because in front of Allah I can't help you Ya Fatima bint Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiyallahu anha O oh, Fatima was the closest person to him Salini min mali ma shi'ti Ask me of my wealth what you want fa inni la ughni anki min Allah shay'a because in front of Allah I can't help you in front of Allah, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, The one whose actions they bring him back, your lineage, your nasab, your family will not bring you forward. So if you have hope, this verse, Ikhwan, it reminds you, Al-Ikhlas, staying away from Riyah. What is Riyah? That you do an act of worship, but your intention is not Allah alone. It's Allah and so and so. No. It cannot work like that. That is rejected. And that is the khutbah today which we spoke about. For those who are not here, you go listen to the khutbah of today. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ya ayyuhal nas, i'lamu anna allaha la yaqbalu min amalin illa ma kana khalisan lahu abtughya bihi wajhu. All people, you should know that Allah does not accept any action except that which is sincerely for Him alone. Allah is rejected. Allah does not want that. فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا And we said that is the importance of al-ikhlas. And to finish off, ikhwani, That is why the Salaf, they used to say, if a person knew that he did one action with pure and proper ikhlas, then that is enough. Because you know one day you will be saved. If you know there is one action, I did it with pure and 100% ikhlas they said they know that that is a very good sign that's a good sign just one action you understand why did they say that because of how important this is and because of how difficult it is it's difficult it's not easy but that is the test you have so this is surah al-kahf ikhwani and alhamdulillah we have managed to finish and it's to see it's a great surah it started with the praise of Allah and worshipping Allah alone and it finishes with that also so whoever missed anything the recordings are there you can go on YouTube and watch I don't know if it's uploaded actually it should be where is أعطيت الإخوة التفسير سورة الكهف أوكي يوتيوب حق the truth that's the channel حق the truth H A Q T H E T R U T H حق the truth with no spacing that's where you'll find the videos do you have any questions the week after next we'll start the authentic سيرة of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the سيرة as through authentic narrations without the many things which are mentioned which are not right so you learn about the life of the greatest human being ever to live on this earth and how he lived his life and how we're supposed to learn now one thing which we didn't focus on sorry here Allah says Qul inna mithlukum. say to them I'm a human being like you and that is the message all the prophets they brought. 
and they used to find it strange. They used to say, Mali Hadar Rasuli They used to say, What is this messenger? He eats food like us and he goes to the marketplace. But Allah He sent messengers who are human beings. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In Nahnu illa basharum mithlukum walakin Allah Yamunnu ala man yasha. So the prophets, the anbiya, the rusul, they were all bashar, human beings. You understand? Human beings. Human beings like me and you, flesh and blood, like we say, born. They used to become sick. They used to go to the washroom. They used to sweat on a hot day. They used to feel cold if it's cold. They used to get married because they had desires just like another human being. They used to eat food. But Allah chose them. And Allah chose the best human beings. They were the best human beings in terms of physical being and in terms of manners. But they are still human. The wisdom behind that, so that you look at them and you follow. Because if Allah brought an angel, we human beings were very good in excuses. We'll say, how can you be like an angel? You understand? You'll say, how can you be like him? He's Jibril. He's Mikael. How can you be like him? But Allah brought human beings. They were born. They grew up. They became sick. They had to fight. They bleed. They eat. They get married. They get stressed. You understand? So you can follow. So you want to know how to deal with your marital problems. Look how the Prophet وسلم, he dealt with nine wives. You have one and you're sweating. You already have gray hair. All you do is complain. Don't complain. Learn your religion. See how the Prophet وسلم, he dealt with that. You think he didn't have problems in his house. He had problems because they are human beings. They are human beings. How did the Prophet وسلم, do business? Learn. How did he do business? How did the Prophet وسلم, do his ibadah, which we talked about today. You have to learn. How did he balance his life? Huh? How did he balance his life? For the family, and then you have for Allah. You learn his life. And the Sahaba. You understand? That is the key. The Sunnah is the key. That is something we overlook. I said this here before. The prophets of Allah, they're human beings. And subhanallah. It is rare to find any problem. Me and you, we confess, except that Allah has given us an example in a prophet. Either Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, or Nuh, or Adam, or anybody else. Rare. Can you have a problem which they didn't have? You are sick. You are suffering from an illness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested his slave Ayyub alayhi salam for 18 years. To the point he could not even go to the washroom without his wife holding him. That's a prophet of Allah. And he was so rich and he lost everything. Everything he lost. All of his other wives, they died. His children, they died. He lost everything. You think you have trouble? Go back and read the Quran. The Quran is the, is the, is the, is the, is the, is the cure. Your child is giving you problems. They don't want to be good Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Adam, our father, with that. When one of them killed the other. Nuh alayhi salam, he sees his son. He says, Ya bunayar ma'ana. And he refused to become Muslim. You think your wife is problematic? She doesn't want to be a good Muslim? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested who? Nuh alayhi salam and Lut alayhi salam. With wives who are disobedient, they didn't want to become Muslims. You think your husband, sister, he is not good, he's not a good Muslim? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Asiya with the worst human being, Fir'aun. There's no problem you can suffer except that you have a Salaf, you have a predecessor in the prophets of Allah. You understand? So if you have any questions, you can ask, otherwise we have to meet the brothers who are new here and we have to speak to them now very quickly if you have questions Fadl.
for what? If someone goes against the sunnah intentionally, then he is in a big, big trouble. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةٌ أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Let them be warned, those who go against his command, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that a fitna is going to come to them, or a painful punishment. Imam Ahmad said, أَتَدْرُونَ مَا الْفِتْنَةٌ الْفِتْنَةٌ أَنْ يَرُدَّ حَرِيثِ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَيَزِيغَ قَلْبَهُ فَيَرُدَّ الدِّينُ كُلُّهَا فَيَهْلِكُ That you'll reject one sunnah, one hadith, and your heart will become diseased, and then you reject the whole religion. That is the fitna. It starts like that. You understand? So the one who contradicts the sunnah intentionally, he is in a big problem. Big problem. But the one who knows, he says, yeah, I know this is wrong and I'm making a mistake. عَسَى اللَّهُ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah will forgive him, inshallah, if he repents. If he repents. Naam. Anybody else? Yes. Arya is shirk. Arya is shirk. Lakin it is shirk which doesn't take you out of Islam. Because there's two types of riya. You are doing it to please people and also you want the reward from Allah. This is Riyah. It's shirk al as the Prophet says, it's minor shirk. But if you're doing it only for the people, you're praying only for the people, you don't, you don't really care Allah gives you reward or not, then this might be shirk al-akbar. This might be major shirk. You understand? How does Iblis know everything yet he still denies? It's because he's evil. There's a lot of people who know the truth but they reject it. Fir'aun is the same thing and his people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَحَّدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًا They rejected the message which Musa alayhi salam he brought, وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ Even though themselves in their souls they had yaqeen. Certainty. Why? Zulman, because they're oppressive. Huh? And because they wanted to show Musa enmity. How can we agree to him? You understand? That is why, but they knew it. They knew this is the truth. Abu Talib, the uncle of the Prophet, وسلم, he knew. And he used to say, Lawla ma'arratun. If it was not for the fact that people would shame me, they say, Oh, he left the religion of his father. I know that the religion of Muhammad is the true religion. He said this himself. He knew, but he rejected. You understand? So there's people like that. They know, they see, this is right. But they don't make the decision to accept it. So we have many examples, many examples. Naam. What is the wisdom of reciting Surah Al-Kahf every Friday? We have talked about that in 15 lectures now, 15 weeks. Every ayah has a wisdom behind it. It's a reminder. It, con it contains a lot of great lessons, around six or seven main themes which come in this surah, which you need, I need to be reminded every week. That's the wisdom. It has a very important message, which you need to be reminded with. The certain surahs, these are the ones we have, we have been discussing here for the last year or two. Surah Al-Kahf, which is read every Friday. Surah Al-Hud, which the Prophet ﷺ says, Shayabatni Hud, I became, I grew gray hair because of Surah Al-Hud. Surah Al-Fatiha. Uh, surah Al-A'la and Surah Al-Ghashiya. Sabbihisma Rabbika Al-A'la and Hal Atak. This surah which the Prophet ﷺ used to repeat weekly or maybe daily, they have great lessons. That is why they are repeated. So we need to know because those are the things we need. The Sahaba when they read the Quran, they didn't just read it. They read to understand and to know what is the message saying to me. Now, 
Last question. Last one. Yes. How does this surah save you from the fitna of Dajjal? Allahu A'lam. I don't know. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it and I believe in it. How? I don't know how. How? I don't know how. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said if you memorize the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kaf you'll be protected from the fitna of Dajjal. Then you do it. Then you do it. Now. We said that was the last question, right? Unless someone else has a question. Someone else? Tayyib Khani, one last thing. We have a very big group of our brothers. Don't stare at them like that. You make them shy. Who just came from Syria and they have been located at this hotel which is next to the Masjid, Radisson. They're all families. So the least we can do is to show them the brotherhood and the good hosting which Islam teaches us to do. That's the least we can do. So we'll keep you posted for those of you who want to help of how we can help our brothers. And when we say help is not money, don't think about money. How they can, what you call, I don't like the word but you have to use it, integrate into this society. How they can start their life here. They're coming from a very troublesome time and a place. So, you know, if you're interested, you, you come see me after and we see how, what we can do. Or, I don't see the brothers here though. Those brothers who, ha who, who do my Facebook thing. They're not here today. We'll keep it posted on the Facebook thing. I don't know what it's called, the Facebook just search my name, Abu Umar, you'll see it. I don't know the, is it an, you, you say an address of Facebook or what? No, no, Facebook. Facebook page, whatever it is. We'll keep the updates there or maybe the website of Abu Huraira also. I can't guarantee that, but I'll keep the updated Facebook thing. If I sneeze during the prayer and say, Alhamdulillah, is my prayer value? Yes. If you sneeze during the prayer, you say Alhamdulillah, but not out loud, just for yourself, say Alhamdulillah. Unless you're reading the Fatiha, if you're reading the Fatiha, you say, say Surat al Amta Alim, then you sneeze. If you say Alhamdulillah, you have to restart the Fatiha. Because now you have entered into the Fatiha words which are not part of it. You restart. But any other place of the prayer, you say Alhamdulillah and you continue your salah. Now, we'll continue next week, Ikhwani. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik shana la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka tu bilaik. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum.